Hello, young lady. Welcome to Shepherd's Crook. My name is Mr. Simon. Are you looking for some wisdom? No, I just need a good story, a distraction, please. Ah, I have just what you need. Take a look. Okay. The Story of Joan The war continued year in and year out. It had already been 100 years. It was a war that started because the English wanted to take over France. A young girl sits on a hill dreaming that life would someday be easier for her parents and the people of her country. She thought rarely about herself, but for others she was concerned. She and her friends played on this hill by a large beech tree. They danced around it. But on any given day, English soldiers might come to this pretty French hillside with guns firing. Then Joan and her family would have to hide in the hills or flee to the next town. Joan didn't go to school. She had no possessions a couple, except a couple of dresses stuffed in a bag. No one owned much among these villagers. But then, one day on that hillside, the girl saw a flash of light. It wasn't an explosion or a weapon. The light seemed pure and pleasant. A voice spoke from the glow. Joan, Joan, you will be the defender of France. Joan chuckled to herself. A playmate nearby looked at her. What are you laughing at, the boy said. Joan pointed. She could make out big wings in the light, and a solemn male voice repeated the message. He said, I will defend France. Joan and her friends had sometimes talked about stopping this war that went on and on forever. Why wouldn't the British leave the French alone? But now her friend said, Ahem, There's no one there, Joan. Are you imagining things? When Joan looked down the hill again, there was nothing there. But now, every time she went out with her friends, she heard words about a battle. Prepare, prepare, the voices said. She heard St. Catherine of Siena, who had defended the Pope of Rome against an impostor. Joan began to pray hard. She talked to Jesus, Mary, and the saints. Help me, please. Help me see what I am supposed to do for you, Lord God, she prayed. Are these voices I hear real? When she was 15 years old, Michael, the Archangel of Heaven, told Joan to go to the leader of France, who was to become the king. Tell him you will lead the battle to put him on the throne. Joan did as she was told, but she was laughed at. She was so young, and she was a girl. No army was ever going to listen to a girl. No king was going to listen either. Joan was disappointed, but she continued to hear the voices of saints and angels. They assured her that her vocation truly was to lead armies to defend France and keep her country devoted to God. On her second appearance before the Archduke, the voices told her things she could not possibly know. She told the Duke personal things that no one else knew. He tested her. She was clearly seeing into the future and seeing into his private world. This child surely was sent by God. His eyes were opened. Joan was 17 years old when she called an army to follow her into battle. Some were skeptical, but she made her horse charge ahead when the men behind her were ready to retreat. Her courage in facing the enemy when all seemed hopeless filled the men around her with trust and courage. 
the Maid of Orleans is what they called her. And now the soldiers were unafraid. They weren't going to run away anymore. They would follow the young maid. In battle after battle, the British saw a tiny figure with long braids flowing from her helmet who led soldiers twice her size. They were enraged. Capture the maid was the cry of the English. When she was 19, Joan was captured and brought to trial in England. She was accused of being a witch. She was condemned for wearing men's clothing and riding a horse into battle. Her king, back in France, could have helped her, but he did not. His fear was back. He ignored the maid who had put him on the throne of France. Joan could only trust God. The court in England condemned her. Joan knew that she had accomplished much. Her short time on earth had been full. She did want to live. But she would follow again the guidance of God. She went to her death with the same courage she showed when she faced battles. God would win. Joan was burned at the stake at age 19. Within a few short years after that, France was finally free because of Joan. On the hillsides of France, Joan's light now shines. When the young woman finished reading the story, she looked up. The shopkeeper had tears in his eyes. He said, She's in heaven looking after you, Joan. She will fill you with courage. How did you know my name is Joan? I'm from a long line of storytellers. Mark Twain himself passed on a story to me about Joan of Arc. When he was just a boy, he had read about her. Then he went on to spend 12 years in France documenting her life. He wrote it as a story, but it is very true. God speaks to those who listen. It was he who told me, you are Joan, who will fight for truth. We are in a spiritual battle while we're on earth, Joan. This is a time to be the church militant fighting against the devil who tempts all. Have courage.